Welcome to the channel's book club. De Koye Oyeyinka has lived in three continents. He spent his first 15 years in Nigeria and the next 10 years between Europe and the USA. He has worked with the International Labor Organization in Ethiopia. He is the author of this novel titled Steel Born, which was published by Kenyan publisher East African Educational Publishers and was launched in Nairobi in 2014. Koye joined us to review his book and share some of the experiences that have made him a writer to be reckoned with. Please join us after this break. Good music and lovely works of art. Art is more than what we present. We live in an image-based society, so art, no, driven. And then while in print, I was doing things in sculpture. There was nothing, no drama, not even makeup. I wanted to sweat. It's about using your gift to make an impact. And going the extra mile to give others a lift. They gave me access in the beginning, but when I started photographing, some of that group came and broke my camera. Tune in to Art House. Koye, it's nice to have you on the Channels Book Club. Such a pleasure to be here. I like what you're wearing. Thank you. It's <laughs> traditional Yoruba outfit. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start from I'm going to start from from um, your background. Okay. Um, you, you've lived quite a number of years in Europe mm -hmm. and North America, if I'm correct. Yeah. And um, you're back in Nigeria, mm -hmm. working as a professional in one of the corporate organizations out there. Mm -hmm. um, how's how's that journey been for you and when did writing come in okay um the journey has been quite fascinating i think it's been quite instructive to see a myriad of cultures and people's attitudes to the world i think um one thing that i found that was particularly interesting is as you go from place to place um people's reactions to certain things it's 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 almost standard based on their background um, you can almost typecast people based on their social economic background. For them in a certain situation, whether they're American or they're Nigerian, mm -hmm. they will almost always react the same way. Um, so I grew up here in Lagos till I was 14. And then um, we moved to the Netherlands because my dad works with the UN. Okay. And I was there for two years. Um, but if I stayed there, I was going to have to continue school in Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I applied to schools in the States and I got into um, a boarding school in New Hampshire and I went there for two years and then I stayed on for another four in Georgetown University in DC. Um, I did economics and psychology and I was on a, you know, this journey to come and save, <laughs> to R save Africa. Rescue Africa. Exactly. I was like, I'm coming home, I'm going to change everything. So I went to East Africa and I was um, in Ethiopia working with the ILO. And it was then um, I had this boss who had a very robust African library. So I'd always been interested in writing. Um, I find I tend to do better with written words than with spoken words. I just capture the things I want to say more concisely. Um, but I hadn't really delved into African literature. I only read things fall apart because all my friends in the Everybody States were asking me about it. And I was just like, I, I, I haven't read this book. Um, so I always loved reading, like I had read Victor Hugo, Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens, sorry, all these guys growing up. And then I get to, you know, um, Ethiopia and I see this very robust African library and I had no clue about most of these guys. So I started opening it up and reading and reading and I was like, wow, this is our story told by our people. Mm. And this is what I want to do. I want to be able to be a reference point for people to say, you know, what do you believe in? What is your, what is your culture? What is your history? Um, and I think it's very important we tell our history ourselves. So that's what got me fully into writing. I loved creative writing as a child, but I never, you know, thought I would seriously be a writer for the longest time. I've read the, the um, review, mm -hmm. and it looks like a very exciting book, mm -hmm. and it has been highly recommended. Excellent. You know, so, uh, but let me be like so many people out mm -hmm. there who are curious. What's Stillborn about? So... Um, Stillborn is the tragedy of the Nigerian and the African independence. 
It's the whole idea of nations who wanted their own voice, who wanted their own feet, but they were not quite ready. So it's the whole idea that um, perhaps maybe we, you know, we were given independence too soon or we fought for independence too soon, which is quite controversial an idea um, because we should be able to govern ourselves and we should be able to move ourselves forward. Um, but if you read the prologue, it's this, it's sort of a synopsis of what I thought was the, was the angst that was going on with people then. They just wanted freedom, they just wanted to be free. But they, don't, they didn't really understand that freedom comes with responsibility. Mm. And so we get this freedom and we don't have the responsibility and then we start like picking at things that don't matter, Ooh, um, tribalism, corruption. These are the things that we see begin to emerge. We didn't have a cohesive story we wanted to use to define ourselves. We had been defined for so long by colonialism, we didn't know what we were. So when we were suddenly given this freedom, things just, as Achebe says, fell apart. <laughs> um, so with Stillborn, what I tried to do was to give a portrait of the nation from right before independence till 2010, which was when I was writing the book. And um, I, you know, I tried to jump around the entire nation, um, different tribes, different experiences, Southwest, North, Southeast, um, and then just have the people share their experiences in the hopes that that would give us a potent view of the Nigerian experience. And what was exciting was when I went to Kenya for the book launch, people could identify. They were like, this is not the story of Nigeria. This is an African story. Mm -hmm. This is an African journey. Um, the stumbling, the, 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 the walk that hasn't been fulfilled is not, it's not something only Nigerians can identify with. We all know this. We all see this mm -hmm. in the everyday. Um, so that was what was most exciting for me, that the Nigerian story is the African story. And it's a story that we wrote ourselves, perhaps without being fully conscious of what we were trying to tell. Mm. Mm. So hopefully if we understand it better and if I look at it and reflect on it, um, then it gives us a better idea of where we want to be and what we want to actually say of ourselves. Um, it was actually the last elections that prompted me to start writing. The fact that like the president had been sick for ages, p possibly dead, and we didn't know his wife just hid this from everyone. And we were you know, looking for new leaders, and everyone that they proposed to us was all people who have come before and desecrated the nation, added very little, and they were putting themselves forward again. And I was like, do you think we don't remember? We know what you've done. Like, we need new voices, we need new people. We, it's, it's a new challenge. You don't seem to understand what is going on. Um, they have a very pre-independence mindset. They're, they're quite stuck in the past. And that's not what we want for the country. If we continue with this, guys, this old generation will be stillborn. And that's the issue. Mm. Mm. Now, I, I've spoken to so many writers. Um, and I'm always, every time I meet a writer, I'm always curious. It's a question I ask often. Um, are you a writer on a mission um, to, are you trying to send out a message or are you just an artist um, <laughs> who is trying to find expression through your writings? Uh, so I, I, I'm curious, are you a writer on a mission or uh, you just write because you love to write, love to create stories? When I, when I first started, I think it was more just for the art. I just really enjoyed writing. But as you begin writing, your characters take on a mission of their own. They tell you, we are not just created to be beautiful on your pages. We are created for a reason. And they started to tell me, like, look, um, certain things cannot keep going on. Like, corruption is an issue. And that's blatant throughout the book. Tribalism is an issue, and it's blatant throughout the book. And for me personally, minus my characters, I just really was, I've been always intrigued by the whole Pan-African notion, the Pan-African movement. I feel that like, we hate when people call Africa a country, but I think to be competitive on a global scale, we need to act as a unit, as a combined unit. And I think that would be sort of my mission if I had any mission, which was also part of why I was very pleased I was printed in East Africa first, because it forced people to ask, ask why, why, why go there first. And when I went to East Africa and I did the book launch, and it was just brilliant to see all this 
I had a sort of symposium at a university, and it was just brilliant to see this really young student so excited about the African debate, and they were tackling me about Obasanjo, they were tackling me about <laughs> <laughs> about all Nigerian politics. All and characters. Exactly, <laughs> and I was just like, how, like, how do you guys know these things? Hmm. But like, it was, that was very fascinating for me, and I was like, this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a Pan-African debate going again. And I think art is always the strongest medium to lead this. In the 60s and 70s, we saw that with Achebe and Nguigi Watiogo. Now again, we're seeing it with Chimamanda and... Um, why nine? Why nine? Quite a, quite a exactly. A, quite a few of them, and and even the musicians. There's a lot of collaborations going on again, and I think once we have this, this identity, this movement going, um, I believe it's easier for the youth to follow a movement, um, than just a person, and mm -hmm. and and if we can, if we as individuals, artists if you can influence people to yeah. key into this movement, into this idea, then I think as a force, we can, we can drive yeah. the nation, the, the continent Tell forward. Tell me about that story. How did you end up publishing with East African mm -hmm. Educational <laughs> Publishers um, Limited in, in Kenya, right? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you publish with any of the Nigerian publishers? Um, I sent it to the three biggest names I knew, which was Casa Republic, Farafina, and East African Educa Educational Publishers. They were the first to respond. Um, for me, initially, it was very important that I was printed in Africa first, because I was trying to tell an African story. And um, I guess initially, there was a lot of pushback in terms of trying to make it a simpler story when I, when I was looking to the West. And I was, I was saying, I'm not trying to write a storybook. Like, I know I can make it easier. I can make it flow a bit more, you know, in a more subtle way. But I want to affect literature. I try to do things um, with the book, like there are lines where instead of, it's very concise for the scope of the book. And so how I tried to get over that was there are parts where in lines, this is the example I used the most, instead of describing a Lagos traffic, I wrote the sentences like it was a traffic jam. So you have really big words in very short sentences, mm -hmm. so it feels choked. And then I'll just use a lot of long, flowing, alliterating words, so it seemed like the traffic was suddenly moving. Mm -hmm. So like I was trying to like I was influenced by Alfred Hitchcock. He's this okay. movie director oh, who did yeah. a lot of that in movies. Yes. Yes. Um, he said it's not that the actors that are the movie, the camera angle, the lighting, all these things affect it. So I was trying to create art to some degree um, with my writing style, okay. and and that was important for me. Okay, so basically, if Casava Republic or Farafina had responded quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't go with either of them. Okay, I'm actually in talks with Farafina right now okay. to do an Nigerian version. Now, professional, mm -hmm. economist, work with, with top corporate organizations in, in Nigeria. How do you find time to write? I'm assuming you're still, you still actively writing. Mm. Uh, how do you find time to write? And how do you find time to read? I know writers read a mm, lot. Yes, yes. How, how has that been for you? Um, initially, when I first came back, it was extremely difficult. I just could not juggle the two of them. Um, so what I decided to do was just put yourself on a strict timetable. Um, so I traveled to Kenya, and I came back, and they were two hours ahead. And I just decided, you know what? I won't adjust to the time difference. So now I wake up at 4, and then I try and write in the early hours. And then I start my day, and then I come back home, and I try and force myself to read at least an hour every day. It doesn't matter what, what you, you happens. You read an hour every, every evening? Yes, I try and force myself to do that. And what, what kind of things do you read in um, every evening? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm writing, it depends on what I'm writing, because whatever you read affects what you're writing. So like when I was writing this book, I, I read, OK, First thing I do before I start a new book, I read 100 Days of Solitude, Things Fall Apart, because they're just two books that blow my mind. Then I read a, a Murakami, um, just because he's so different in the way he approaches books. And then I don't touch them. And um, I read books that negate my flaws. So for example, when I was writing this, I heard I wasn't very strong at dialogue. So I went and bought a ton of authors who I was told, like, 
masters. They are, yeah, masters, they are masters of, of dialogue. <laughs> and I would just study the, what I was doing back then was I would read a book a week and write a short story um, using that writer's voice but amending it to my style. And I did that for like two months. And then when I thought I was confident and more robust in my writing, then I just read. But I try not to read books that are too close to what I'm writing or authors whose voices are too strong whilst I'm writing. Otherwise, they'll seep into your work. Mm, your answer shows that writing is a craft yeah. that has to be mastered. Kwe, thank you for joining us on the Channels Book Club. Such a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.